In this video, you are going to learn how to create this text cycle component in Framer without writing a single line of code. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So as you can see, here we are in Framer, and we already have a little document set up, but it is nothing crazy. We just have a text slider stack, and within that stack we have this text, and this stack is set to horizontal direction and the distribute is set to start. So this text is on the left side of the stack. So what we need to do is to basically duplicate this text here and write slides here. So now we have this uh, slides text here, which is basically a separate text layer. And this is going to have a white color and yeah uh, if you are doing it for yourself make sure that this stack has a gap which is basically kind of the same size that we have here in this text which is around 19 pixels in my case so yeah basically that's all we have to do here and now we can make a component out of this slides text because we are going to be creating uh, different variants and connecting them with interactions to create the text cycle component. So now we can press Option Command and K, and this will create a component for us. I'm gonna just give it a name that is Words, and then hit Enter on my keyboard. So now we have this uh, component canvas view. Basically, here what we can do is we can duplicate this text here a couple of times but before that I'm gonna turn this into a stack because it isn't so I'm gonna select the variant one and give it the layout so now it is perfectly turned into a stack and I'm gonna set the width to fit content and the height to fit content as well so if I for example change the text here, the frame size will also adapt to it. So now I can duplicate this four times. If you want to have more text, you can duplicate it more times. But in this case, we're going to only have three text, but we need to have four text in order to do a text cycle component with three texts. The reason for this is quite interesting but I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. So we have all these right here now and we can just rename these texts. So this will be text one, this will be text two, text three and the last one will be text one second. So the last one will basically be the same text as the first one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these texts here. So the text two and text three and the text one second. And we're going to set their position to absolute. So now they are absolutely positioned. We can move them around freely. I'm going to set the left pin to zero and I'm going to also activate the bottom pin. And now we cannot see them. And that's because this variant overflow is set to hidden. So we're going to set it to visible. And now if we move these down with the arrow keys, you can see these separate layers here. So I can just place them right below each other. So the text two will be basically here under the text one. The text three will be below that and the text one second will be below that. So now what we can do is we can go into uh, the variables and change the texts on each. So text two will have a different variable. So we're going to create a new plain text. This will be title two and it will say moves. So as you can see, we have now slides moves. And the third one will also have a new variable, title three, and this will say is cool. And then the last one will be basically the same as the first one. So we can leave the title variable there. Now we can add multiple variants to this component. So I'm going to add another variant. This will be variant two. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the text one. 
set its position to absolute so I can move it around freely. I will set the left pin to zero and then also I'm going to activate the bottom pin and then by adjusting this value I'm going to move it here to the top and then I'm going to select text 2 I'm going to set its type to relative so now it jumps into the frame and I will just select these texts here and move them up. So basically what will happen is if we go from variant 1 to variant 2, these texts will move up. I can also show that to you. So if I connect these with an appear interaction and we wait a little bit here, you can see that after waiting one second, it goes up. So yeah, we can now add another variant, which will be variant 3. And I'm gonna basically change the text to absolute and then set the left pin to zero. Then select the text one and the text two, move them up. Then the third text will be relative, so it jumps in place. And then this will be right here. And then we can add the last variant. We move everything up again. So this will be absolute, left pin is zero. Then we move these to the top like this, and this will be relative. So now we have all these texts and they are moving up with each variant. And so here is the part where I'm gonna explain why we have the slides two times. So if we would do three texts and we would only use three texts in the component so we wouldn't have a fourth one we would basically go like this so we go from variant one to variant two by moving up then we go from variant two to variant three by moving up again and from here to go back to this we would need to animate all these back and then go again to the top I can also show this to you by just showing this bad version of the component. So as you can see, it starts moving up, but then to go back to the variant one, we need to animate all the text back to the bottom. And we actually can see that animation and that doesn't really look great because we want to show like an infinite cycle loop that always goes to the top. So that's why we basically use that helper uh, text layer, which is basically the slides one more time here at the bottom. And that's the variant four. And what we can do with this is basically we can animate from variant four to variant one with an instant transition, which will basically mean that we transition from variant four to variant one. So these text layers go back into their position, but we didn't really you know, notice anything because we were displaying slides and we are displaying slides here as well. And we just go with an instant transition. So yeah, basically that's the trick. So now what we can do is we can connect these with appear uh, effects. At the first one, we're gonna wait 0.5. And then from here, we're gonna go with one second delay. From here, we're gonna go with one second delay. And from variant four to variant one, we're gonna go with 0.5 delay again. And as I said, we want to go from variant 4 to variant 1 with an instant transition. So we're going to set the variant 1's transition to instant. And then we're going to set back all the other variants' transitions to spring. So now if we take a look at this, you can see that they start moving up. But it stops here. It's probably because here it has tap uh, trigger. So I'm going to set it to appear so now everything has appear trigger so now as you can see it moves up perfectly and i can also inspect it here on the home page but as you can see uh, for some reason it it's kind of weird because as they move up the text goes to the left that's probably because we have to send the component here to fit width and fit height 
So now if we take a look again, as you can see, it works perfectly. So now all we have to do is to basically only show the text that is in the frame. So all the rest that we see, for example, right here will be hidden. In this case, this will be hidden and we will show this one. I'm just basically changing the opacity of these text layers, making sure that only the one in the frame is visible. So now if we take a look at this, you can see that we have a text cycle uh, effect that is working perfectly. And because of the uh, variables that we implemented, we can easily change the text for each of the title. So for example, we can say, say uh, framer and three. So now if we take a look at this, the text is changed and we still have the nice text cycle animation. And yeah, basically that's it. For example, here, if we want to have a smaller text size, we can also add uh, a variable for the text size property. So we can select all the text layers and here for the text size, we can cre create a font size variable. And here we can change this text also to a little bit smaller, maybe 42. And this can also change to 42. And then we can make sure that the direction is horizontal. And then a little bit more gap here to match this space right here. So now as you can see, it is nicely optimized for mobile as well. So yeah. Basically, that's how you create a text cycle component for your Framer website without writing a single line of code. If you want to see more resources for Framer, go to framer.university because I have more than 100 resources there, all completely free. And I think those can help you learn Framer. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more. And I'm going to see you in the next one.